Hello, I'm Eric Waite, and in case you don't know me, I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers, a French wine scholar at the Wine Scholar Guild, and a certified whiskey ambassador. Um, on November 2nd, I went to the Whiskey Fest in San Francisco, um, and I thought I'd do a little bit of a review of it uh, in case you have never been to one of these events and you're wondering if you should uh, spend the money. Now, I'm talking about an event that already passed, and very shortly in December, there's going to be another Whiskey Fast in New York. So maybe, if you haven't got tickets already, maybe if you can get out there, you might want to check it out. All right. So there's so much going on at these events. I, I can't show you everything, can't explain everything. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit uh, um, of a, a little bit of an insight into my experience at the Whiskey Fest. First, when you arrive, you get a little nice little tote bag. Um, it has the Whiskey Fest on, and inside that tote bag, um, you get an ink pen. It says Whiskey Fest. What they should add with this uh, little ink pen is a notepad, just a little paper notepad. It says Whiskey Fest on it, so you can take notes on the whiskeys that you're tasting, whether you want to buy them or not. All right, just a hint. Uh, you get, get these nice little coasters. There's Whiskey Fest, has the date on get those nice little coasters. You get, of course, a Glen Cairn. It says Whiskey Fest 2018. These are kind of nice to collect. I've got a little bit of bourbon in here, a little Buffalo Trace, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. But I only drink whiskeys for medicinal purposes. <coughs> now I feel like I'm coming down with something. That hits the spot. All right, and of course, um, you, there's two different. You can go in for general, or you can go in as a VIP. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in, in a little bit. If you go into VIP, get an hour early, get your first crack at the um, whiskey tables, and of course, you get this little bit of a badge here. Um, and I think that's about it uh, for when you first enter. Now, there are 92 representatives there, 92 tables. There's no way in the world you're gonna taste them all and still remain uh, upright. So what I'm gonna do here is just share with you a little bit of what I saw along with some uh, photos. First of all, of course, we have our scotch. Um, the representatives of McCollin, Highland Park, Glen Rothes, Glen Morangy, Isla, Lafroig, and on and on and on. A lot of scotch uh, representatives there. Some of these I had already been to the actual distilleries, um, so I just looked for those that I hadn't been to before. One table, it was a Glen Goyne. Now, I'd been to the Glen Goyne distillery, started talking to the gentleman, just happened to share that I had been there, enjoyed my visit, and he handed me a glass of the uh, Glen Goyne 21 year old. Absolutely phenomenal whiskey. You know, when you go to these events and you're tasting a lot of whiskeys, you tend to, you get a nice little one ounce pour, maybe two ounce pours or whatever. Um, you taste it because you don't want to get hammered. You taste it, smell it, taste it, get a sense of it, pour it out, try some, drink some water, and then go on to the, to the next one. But this gentleman, he poured me a rather healthy sample, and it was such a good whiskey. It's one I couldn't pour out. It was so good. Fortunately, uh, it was near the end of my finishing of tasting whiskeys, so I was able to enjoy the entire one. All right, so there are also bourbons and Tennessee whiskeys. These are just a few. A few. Um, the Old Forester, of course, Jack Daniels is there. Wild Turkey, been to Wild Turkey Distillery. Bib and Tucker, wasn't familiar with them. It was nice to try those. But there was also something special that I wasn't expecting, which was a blackened. If you're not familiar with Blackened, here's a little, little flyer. This is Metallica's whiskey, you know, the, the, the metal band. Uh, and so the, they weren't there. Metallica wasn't there, but they were there. But the whiskey was there and there was a rep were there. So they had a little handout to a little bit about the, the whiskey and get like a little uh, card, you know, to, to tell you a little bit more about, about the whiskey and so forth. Um, there's been some really, really good reviews out there. Uh, the Whiskey Dictionary, the Whiskey Dick. Um, if you want to know more about this whiskey and his perception of it, another, another fellow Metallica fan, I'll put a link down below, but you're gonna wanna check out uh, the Whiskey Dick's uh, review of Blackened. Um, 
when you're tasting whiskeys at an event like this, we're going you're tasting you know a lot of different whiskeys and it's sort of crowded, maybe a little bit noisy. You get a sense of the whiskey, but it's not the same as being able to sort of hang out, sit on your couch, uh, you know, and sort of relax and contemplate and think about the whiskey. So, you know, you got to take context into consideration. Oh, another thing I got when I was there wasn't free. I, I bought me a T-shirt, Whiskey Fest T-shirt there. Anyhow, so it, it, you get a good experience, you get some exposure to a whiskey, but it's not the same thing as trying at home. But nevertheless, so if you want to know more about Blackened, uh, check out uh, the Whiskey Dictionary's uh, review. Uh, my perception of it, I thought it was sort of light, it was fresh, sweet, it was a good whiskey. Um, I, I, nothing bad to say about it. I, I would say maybe somewhat entry level. But I thought it was good, but generally, so sort of I would say medium to light, uh, uh, sweet uh, whiskey with a general profile similar to that you expect from uh, an American bourbon or a straight whiskey. Alrighty, um, uh, 1792. That was absolutely uh, phenomenal. And then the uh, coup de gras, the coupe de grace. Uh, there was pappy and rip van winkle they were i couldn't believe they were pouring this i've never seen this at a whiskey event before now when i got there there was a long line now one of the advantages of having a vip is um, if a table should run out of a particular whiskey you've gotten in there an hour before uh, the general admission ticket holders so you've got a first crack at that before they do however I found the event wasn't overly crowded. Sure, there are plenty of people there, but it wasn't overly crowded. It wasn't as elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, that kind of bumper kind of car kind of experience. It wasn't that busy. So I probably could have gone with a general admission and everything went just fine. So what I did with the Rip Van Winkle table, since it was a long line and I didn't want to spend my time standing in line, they also serve food. Uh, which is really, really important because if you're drinking whiskey, you need some substance behind it to uh, absorb it. Food was good. They had tables with charcuterie, that's meats and cheeses, and, and then it breads, um, as well as tables uh, within the area, as well as in the breakout area of foods. Um, and so I waited to the mass crowd, a, a large portion of them had their whiskeys and went to go eat some food. And when they went to go eat some food, boom, I jumped in line, was able to taste um, the uh, Rip Van Winkle and Pappy Van Winkle um, with only like one or two people ahead of me. So that's the kind of strategy you want to take at these sort of uh, events. Um, my impression of it, I've had it a couple of times before. I think it's a very, 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 very good American whiskey. Is it worth all the hype and the money people tend to spend on it on the secondary market? Probably not. But when something's popular, that's the way it goes. But still, it's very, 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 very good. All right. Irish whiskeys. I tasted a bunch of Irish whiskeys. I don't have as much, I have a lot more experience with Scottish whiskeys and bourbons than I do with Irish whiskeys. Um, so I did taste a number of them. You know, the Bush Mills is there, you know, really well known. West Cork, I had not tried that one before. I thought they're really, really, really good. Uh, Quiet Man, and another one I had never heard of was a Napa, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Napog, K-N-A-P-P-O-G-U-E. Uh, I thought it was also very, very, very good. In fact, I probably was tasting more Irish whiskeys than I was Scottish whiskeys because I'm just not as familiar with uh, Irish whiskeys as I would like to be. Then there were Canadian whiskeys. There were a number of different Canadian wh whiskeys there, but the one that I think really stealing the show was J.P. Weiser's and the master distiller was there, uh, Dr. Don Livermore. I was really happy to uh, be able to meet him. I had seen him on uh, a couple of fellow whiskey tuber channels, uh, particularly like Trenny and C. If you haven't seen that, you want to know who uh, Dr. Don Livermore is, definitely going to want to check out their video of him. I'll put another link down below. Um, if you're a whiskey geek, this is a guy you want to get to know, become familiar with, and listen to whenever you get a chance. Listen to his lectures. He's got a lot of other. Uh, there are a lot of other videos out there on YouTube um, on him talking. Um, so I got to meet him, and then there are these breakout sections, these little classes you can take in these breakout rooms uh, later in the evening, and I got to sit in on uh, his lecture. He was talking about uh, the sources of the various aromas and flavors of whiskey, and he has developed this flavor well. This is the Canadian 
flavor wheel and he was handing these out for free um and we got to try six canadian whiskeys from jp weiser's including the lot for the the lot 40 cast strength which is not sold here in the united states that whiskey is unbelievable it is phenomenal uh, i would almost be willing to say tasting that in combination with meeting him be able to listen to him that alone i would for me was worth the cost of the whiskey fest itself it was absolutely fantastic now it is a little challenging you know you've taste a bunch of whiskeys, eat some food, particularly I had some pasta when I was there, some meats and cheeses. They go listen on a, a lecture, a very whiskey geeky lecture that's very detailed. Um, you know, at that point, you might feel a little more like taking a nap, but still, it was very, 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 very good. Really nice to meet him. And I was just thoroughly impressed with JP Weiser's and the Lot 40 and the cast strength and oh, previously not available here in the United States. All right, so how much does it cost to go? Well, general admission is $275. The VIP is $345. That's no chump change. Um, is it worth it? To me, it is. Now, going from general to uh, VIP, um, that's a huge jump there. Is it worth it? If you know how many people are going to be there, then you'd be able to figure out what you're going to need to spend the extra money in order to get in there to taste the things that you want to taste that might otherwise disappear. You, uh, unless, but unless you know how many people are going to be there, you don't know how crowded it's going to get. It's hard to judge. I bought the VIP ticket, and for me, I thought uh, it was worth it. Alrighty, if you haven't been to a large whiskey event, highly, 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 highly recommend you do it at least once. At least once. Um, and there's several of them out there. There's another one that I'll be attending uh, or I, I attend the last couple of years uh, in San Francisco and San Jose uh, in March. So I'll, um, I'll do a video on that one in, in February before the event. Um, highly recommend it. And it's great meeting the representatives. It's great trying new things, something you've never seen before, but also meeting people. I got to interact with some really, really cool people there. People who were actually there from Scotland, from Ireland, from the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as beyond. And um, interact with them and talk to them about the whiskey experiences and where they're at in their whiskey journey exploration. And I really, really enjoyed that. So uh, if you're one of the people if you're, that I met there and you're watching this video, say hello uh, down below. And all right, I think that's about it. Um, if you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. And if you want to be notified, want to go live or um, post a new video, you want to ring the bell, and I would greatly appreciate it if you would share this video with your fellow whiskey lovers on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. All you have to do is hit the share button, a window will pop up, which will give you a menu, and then click that, and then you can share it. All right, that's it for this uh, review. Until next time, cheers.